I've been trying for like a year to finally get some updated footage of one of these things right here, but every time one came in, it rolled out just as fast because it's one of the best little bunkhouses ever. What makes it so good? Well, stay tuned. Let's find out. Well, despite this one's small size, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm gonna get dove right in here. First of all, the fact that this thing's only about 4,315 pounds, give or take, dry weight. So it's small, it's lightweight, it's easily towable. It's not so big that you need a giant vehicle to haul it around, but they use like the same axles and everything on this that they use on their bigger RVs. So this thing has a cargo capacity of like over 3,100 pounds. Uh, considering the number of big giant trailers I've seen lately, even fifth wheels with like maybe 11, 1200 pounds of cargo, that's fantastic right there. So unless you're gonna load bags of concrete mixed into this one, you're just not gonna overload the axles by any stretch of the imagination. The other thing is it's a simple, easy, no slide floor plan. So it's just less to mess with, less to take care of. You're fully travel functional because there's no slide to get in the way. But the thing is, because this is a really well done Murphy bed model, frankly, I think this is one of the best executed styles Miles of Murphy beds out there, very similar to like a Rockwood or Flagstaff kind of Murphy bed. Um, it gives you the space on a rainy day of a slide out camper without the actual weight and cost of a slide out. It's carpetless, it's ventless, it's easy cleaning. It's uh, It has an enclosed accessibility now. It has the strong arm stabilizer jacks, which when uh, paired up with the um, stable steps for the entry door, makes this potentially the most stable little camper you're ever gonna find. And considering it's a bunkhouse, if you got the littles running around all jacked up on marshmallows and Mountain Dew, well, it's kind of nice if you're a little bit motion sensitive, as I've noticed I've become as I've uh, gotten a little bit older here, although a couple of Dramamine and a roller coaster and I'm all right. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this little guy as we go through. It's got a couple little hiccups, like I don't love the fact that there's no window in the entry door, but overall, I can deal with that because I think I'm going to spend more of my time outside here. But what's your take on that? And this is what I call... 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound sack. They packed a lot of big punchy features all into this. Although if what you're looking for is something to sit inside the RV and watch TV all day, this ain't your camper, man. Uh, that, that kind of blank slate spot right there with a little black hole in it, that is intended to be, if you are interested, your TV hookup position. You're probably going to want to put some kind of swing arm mount on there unless you want to hide in the refrigerator and uh, watch TV. And as long as we're talking about potential, maybe this won't work for you, this is not a centrally ducted air conditioning floor plan. It is six and a half foot tall, so like if you're over six foot, you're going to walk under that and your head won't hit the knobs, which is nice. But it's also, it's a small space with the exception of the bathroom. It is an open one room concept and design. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just something that helps them keep the cost in check. And it does allow the air conditioner to operate a little more efficiently. Keep in mind, though, efficiently and effectively are not always the same thing. The reason I say that, because there's not ducting running through the, the ceiling of the RV or the roof, depending on from which angle you're uh, approaching, um, the, the sun beating down on the camper won't heat those vents up before it has a chance to distribute that cooled air through the RV. So it's very efficient. But again, in a small space like this, I don't think it needs to be maximally effective to be, well, effective enough, reasonably effective, basically. Anyway, sorry. Um, the color palette overall, I think, reads as a little bit light. It is kind of on that, like, milk chocolate side of a neutral brown sort of tone going on right here. But this up front is kind of what makes the floor plan work so well, I think. It's a floor plan that you find all over the place in laminated lightweight RVs, but in a conventional stick and tin camper, you don't normally see a really nicely done front Murphy bed setup on this. And by nicely done, I want to give you a demonstration. And never mind the power squats I have to do to get neat looking camera angles like this so it sort of looks like I'm on a green screen to do a uh, Murphy bed demonstration. The reason I wanted to point this out is um, there's all kinds of different Murphy beds out there. There's bendy beds where there's actually a folding mattress. And the benefit of those is that you get more storage under and around the bed versus something like this. This is an easy one piece up and down Murphy bed system with like a little spring loaded gas strut assisted system, almost identical to like what Rockwood and Flagstaff are doing. The reason I really wanna point this out is this is a harder to build more expensive system. It is, in my opinion, my preferred system. Well, in my opinion, it's my preferred system. You get what I'm saying, right? I like it. 
So first of all, to actually step back here and give you the real world size of things, here's how it looks. Now, I'm a leaner, so I kind of like the little armrest bolster that's in here, but you need to pull them out to put the bed down. Uh, what's nice about these is uh, if you're like, hey, stop throwing stuff at your brother, you can throw it at your kids to make them quit throwing stuff at your other kids. That makes sense, right? Any parent understands what I'm talking about, I think. Um, so we're going to jackknife this down. There's simple little bullet latches up here. I think that's what they're called. I'm not a hardware expert. Well, like I said, this is just an easy up-down kind of thing. Like, I'm not a big muscle-bound dude. If, I don't know if you notice, I got chicken arms. And that's all there is to it. There's no, like, you don't have to make the bed every day, every night. You need to be careful with your pillows, because if you're not careful with your pillows, you end up lawn chairing them down into there. But the thing is, and I'll get you a better look at this in a minute, these side stands are tall enough and deep enough, I think you could actually just run your pillows down in here during the day and get them out of the way if you need to. Um, or you could lawn chair them down and fish them out at the end of the night. Whatever works for you, I don't know your life. Now there is one hiccup with this. This is a camp queen. And it's, uh, it, it's been kind of wet, so I'm not actually going to kick my shoes off because, you know, the floor is all kinds of gross. I am going to leave my feet hanging off the end of the bed, but frankly, if my head's at the very top of the bed, that's pretty much what needs to happen anyway. This bed right here is approved by the Bed Goblin Union. That's Ted, Ned, and Fred, the Bed Goblins. Those are the guys that live under here and jump up and bite your toes if they're hanging off at the end of the night. The good news is they can't lawn chair you in here because this one piece bed actually has a nice little safety lock. You actually pull it out over here. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like a bottle opener, although I don't think it's made for that, but hey, neither here nor there. Maybe, maybe it could work, I don't know. This simply jackknifes right back in place and you're down. Up and down, it's faster, it's simpler, it's easier. You don't have to make the bedding every day, every night. But as a result, we do have a little bit less storage under it and we do lose the overhead storage. So I'd be kind of curious to know, which is your preferred style of Murphy bed? And as promised, I wanna get you up here a little bit closer and a little bit more detail. Uh, again, you have those removable armrest bolsters right there. Uh, you could kind of use them as a headrest, but I think they're probably going to fall behind the sofa. Dude. I just kind of put that up there and get it out of the way. I really like the way, though, they've touched up and finished that area off there, that extra little kind of countertop extension. Now, this is interesting. The, uh, the side stands actually pass through into, well, the pass-through compartment outside. Uh, kind of cool thing. And this over here, they call it their, their CPAP storage. They have the little cutaway face cubbies built right into these hanging side stands, but your household outlets are inside of those right there, whereas your USB plugs are outside. I think that if somebody, uh, you know, is a CPAP user, it's kind of nice to have that stuff sort of put away and tucked away during the day. Now, uh, flipping our way around here, it's not the world's biggest kitchen, but considering what they had to work with, I, th I think they did all right. And despite the fact that this is not an extra tall camper, it has a six and a half foot sidewall. They doubled up the storage like Sir Mix-a-Lot over here by throwing that shelf in that cabinet to really maximize the space. Very traditional, conventional microwave, not convection or anything like that. I'm not aware of anyone in this category doing that. By default, these have a 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Uh, there is a swaption to a six cubic foot gas electric though, if you're uh, preferring a little bit more of that, uh, you know, battery sipping propane side of things for some boondocking small little 16 inch easy bake oven not one of the big giant ovens but again in this class and category that's pretty standard and at a glance you just saw cabinet doors you didn't see drawers but again they did the sir mix a lot double up <laughs> and they gave us a pair of drawers inside of doors what's a what's funny about this this is actually less expensive uh to produce because it's actually the front on the drawer that's the most expensive part figure that out so a, a drawer front and a cabinet door cost about the same. So they've knocked a couple cents off this. But also, if you think about it, you see that extra, that, that gap, that tall gap, not tall, but this gap right here between those, this design allows there to be bigger, taller stuff like goofy shaped spatulas in there um, that, uh, you know, won't prevent the drawer from getting blocked out. Now, um, that countertop extension right there, by the way, that can remain out and the Murphy bed can still go up and down. So that's one of the cool things about this. Uh, even though it is that shorter bed, it doesn't really, you know, get in the way of anything. These are all sealed edge press membrane counters. That is a, uh, a, a one basin farm sink. Let me kind of, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Pardon me, I forgot. This is the Splarm 
the split farm hybrid sink. Apologies. I'm glad I pulled that out of the way. And since this is a, uh, a wood studded sidewall, that means the walls are hollow, which means it's much, much easier to run outlets. Uh, not that there's a lot of kitchen space or counter space going on here, but again, with that countertop extension, you might be able to get away with using that extension as like a coffee maker. And for me, that creates the perfect big space down there for a nice large wastebasket, which once again, uh, a, a Gwyn, whatever. Giving you a little look at the kitchen here, close back up again though, just kind of a neat little before and after. We're gonna pivot to the left, just so that you know which way we're headed, help you not be motion sick as we record this stuff here. There's a little bit of extra storage both above and below the dinette uh, as well. Although, they have gone to a more uh, consolidated control panel over here by the main entry door next to that stereo, which is cool. And new for 22, um, these do have dimmable interior cabin lights now, which is kind of cool. You might notice you can, uh, if you, uh, they, like they can swell up, they can swell down. They have positional memory as well. So if you turn them down at night and then flick them back on in the morning, they're still dim. They're not going to be like, ah, get you all revved up like a deuce another runner in the night that's a blinded by the light musical reference in case you're keeping score by the way if you're uh if you're doing the take a shot every time uncle josh makes a pop culture reference you probably have alcohol poisoning watching a couple of these videos i wouldn't recommend doing that um pre-wired for solar as well as another new for 22 thing that these previously lacked now something you didn't uh uh see yet is the fact that um, in the, uh, the the living area and the bedside window have the, the the like straight blackout roller shades right here just to help keep a little bit more sunlight out, help keep it a little more private. And below the dinette, they give you a couple of these big totes. But one of the cool things about these is they're not quite as long as the bench. And I know that sounds like, how is that a positive thing? What it lets you do is stuff you're not going to use all day every day you can shove that in the back and keep it out of the way whereas you can then keep some more easy access stuff up front here or you know what i kind of thought about that uh even though it's got a door in the front that could be a neat little shoe garage over here right by the entry door i, I think that could work does that seem too far-fetched or stupid i don't know makes sense to me and if it makes sense to me it actually might be far-fetched and stupid i i can acknowledge that over here to the double double bunks this is a nice short floor plan that gives us sleeping for like four adults pretty easily. Um, and uh, depending on how you're gonna rack them and stack them over here in the rug rat racks, uh, you might be able to get quite a few kids packed into this thing. Both bunks do have their own USB plugs. I've been looking for a sticker that indicates the, the weight rating on the bunks. I don't see one. Typically double bunks like this are 300 pound rated. If you really need to know that though, give our team here at Bish's RV a call and we will double check that for you. We wanna make sure we're gonna, you know, like, Measure twice, buy once kind of uh, situation here. We want to make sure that you're not, you know, spending money the wrong way, as it were. Now, it's a split open hybrid style bathroom where like the sink and the mirror are out here. So if someone's using the potty or if they're showering, someone else can be washing their hands or brushing their teeth and getting ready to go to bed at night. But that does mean there's not a sink directly technically in the bathroom. I know some folks just don't care for that. Now, speaking of bathroom space, this is fairly tight back here because it's wedged right next against those double bunks. For righties, it's a little tidy. Lefties, she's pretty loosey and uh, all kinds of goosey after a taco Tuesday. Oh, I hope I never... I hope I never explore that rhyme train again. Pardon my umbrella over here. I figured it, it was raining earlier, but it kind of... The weather broke, which was nice. You see that nice rectangular shower. Not a uh, not a tub, not a radius shower either, although it does have a nice little radius track on that shower kind of curtain door hybrid job right there. Um, and uh, that gives us the extra elbow room that I think you're going to want. Now, when you're in campers in this class and budget range, there's quite a few of them that don't put any sort of fan, even the little four-inch fart fan up there in the bathroom. That's sufficient enough for this room. If you wanted a little bit more of a whole house aeration function, you could upgrade that as well. Now, remember I said six and a half foot ceiling. That does mean if you're over six foot tall with the plumbing code requirements where you have to step up in the shower, you are going to have your head up in that bubble. But it is nice that you do have that basically floor to ceiling shower surround paneling too. 
One last thing here. I just noticed uh, as I was rolling up this uh, big door side window shade, again, nice that we have awesome views off this side of the RV. There is a set of household outlets right there. So if you wanted to do like a little laptop station or something right here, I don't know, I've seen a lot of people have a small little coffee maker, a little classic style job sitting right on their dinette table. I suppose you could do that too. Then again, there are some types of like say board games or little kids activities that you need to plug on a rainy day that might be the thing that helps you get through the day without just driving each other crazy now a couple little user convenience things right up front here first of all the power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us so that if you do have a weight distribution system you don't have to get tennis elbow cranking that thing up and down because to do it right you should actually crank the rv uh, up and down like a couple times effectively that's that's an entirely different story for an entirely different day uh twin 20 pound propane tanks with auto changeover regulator if you wanted a 30 uh you might need a new cover you need a couple bottles and you just need to extend the little rod that holds the regulator in place they also have handy little plug buddy with a set of chain hooks right here so you don't got to worry about all your crap just laying down in the ground getting all dirty and corroded and whatnot or um you know, I've seen, uh, you know, living here in Michigan, living in the Midwest, uh, especially in spring and fall where it like freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. Uh, if those chains are laying on the ground and then it snows or rains and freezes, uh, you could be chipping those things out, ripping those things out of the ice. That is absolutely no fun. So keeping them up out of the way, not to mention keeping that plug out of the way of, you know, rain coverage is kind of nice, which is sort of why I like the little cover that they're putting on the power tongue jacks now. That's, uh, that's one of those things that the first time I saw it, I thought it looked a little bit hokey. But I started investigating, and I started asking around in different RV owners' forums how many people actually had power tongue jacks and the switches fail because they got weathered out, and I was actually surprised. It wasn't a super high frequency, but the fact is something as simple as that could prevent uh, you know, that from being an issue. Now, a uh, little red battery disconnect switch there right up front. Um, I kind of prefer those inside cargo pockets, again, with the idea of keeping them protected from the weather, but the wiring is kind of on the inside of the chassis where it's not really weather obvious. A uh, little dry erase board here, and I've asked uh, you folks at home, like, what would you use that for? And there were a shocking number of people that said, I'd use that for a post-trip, uh, like, pre-departure checklist, which I think is an absolutely awesome idea. You write the things on there you need to not forget to do, wipe them off as you're done, and when you've got a clean slate, well, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Unless your name is not Jack, and then hit the road uh, with whatever your name is. Now, this is a Murphy bed model, which usually means you get about Jack squat for outside storage. And certainly, you don't get as much here as you might with some other RVs, but they did a decent job of giving us what they could. Again, a very Rockwood Flagstaff style Murphy bed, which is my personal favorite kind. And if you're looking, if you do jackknife the sofa up, you could get to cargo that maybe shifted and was hard to get to. Now, this RV has some strong arm stabilizer jacks. That's the Bananarama yellow bars that we're going to see on the, the stabilizers. And that's where that funky little triangle and oval job comes from. That allows you to uh, be able to tighten those things down without having to, to crawl all the way under that thing. Although, look at it, that. I swear that thing looks a little bit like something a rancher might stick up the back side of a you know head of cattle, but mm, I, I don't know. I'm also, this is going to shock you, Josh the RV nerd, not exactly the most experienced ranch hand um, out there. But uh, if we're, we're talking chicken strips, well then uh, my ranch hand is ready to go. <laughs> Midwestern dad ranch joke, classic. Now, jumping back here, uh, I, I don't want to skip over the fact that we do have a good door side big breeze window overlooking the dinette, but I think we've already kind of really seen that from the inside of the RV. The, the thing with this floor plan, the way it's kind of laid out, it really does have a pretty short awning, you know? I don't mind bringing attention to things that aren't always positive. I try to be fair, and I want you to know what you're getting into. Um, also, not everybody is a big fan of camp kitchens, and most manufacturers go, eh, yeah, deal with it. Not my problem. It's yours now, bucko. Which, to me, I don't think is a very nice way to, to talk to a customer. But uh, Salem and Wildwood, they don't do that. These are actually optional on all of your Salem Cruise Lights or Wildwood X Lights, which are the same camper under two different names. If you want this just built wide open, the camp kitchen is actually optional on these. But I asked my rep on that, I go, hey, what is your, it's called a take rate. How often do the dealers take that for their stocking units? 
He says 100% of the time in his Midwestern region over here. So that may vary a little bit region to region, but if you're very interested in one of these, but you really don't care for that uh, camp kitchen, know that it is optional. Now you may have noticed in the refrigerator, there was one of those coily sprayer hoses and a garden sprayer hose head thing for it, because that's where everybody keeps those things stored, obviously is in a small outdoor refrigerator. But if you want to, next to the water heater, there's a black tank flush, which is amazing to find on a little camper like this, and a little hookup for that sprayer. That's where those things would go. Um, so it, it's actually kind of cool that you do have some uh, level of outdoor sort of, uh, you know, spray off function. Now, it's darn close to being a pro penis, but it does stick off the side, not the back. So that is, in fact, uh, technically speaking, a propane cooker hooker. And whether you get the camp kitchen or not, the, uh, the, uh, the propane connection will always be there. Now down below, uh, earlier I said this thing has, I, I call it best in class stability. So first of all, those stable steps, even when the jacks are not down, they take so much of the wiggle jiggle out of the RV as people come and go, it's not even funny. That's why I'm not laughing. But these guys right here, those yellow bars, when the jacks come down, you get that cattle prod attachment that I showed you. You can cinch that sucker down, and this thing will feel like it's on a concrete pad. Uh, I, I give Salem and Wildwood, like I said, best-in-class stability marks for that as a result. Now, on a shorter floor plan like this, it's less of an issue, but it's always kind of nice. And something that they did um, within the last year, they enclosed the underbellies of all these now with that accessibility paneling. Uh, kind of cool. Now, this does have a walkable roof. What it does not have is a factory ladder. So I have a question for you. But my question is not, would you like a ladder? I, I'm kind of going under the presumption that you would. Most people would definitely seem to prefer a ladder. I would be one of those. I would ask, is there anybody out there who doesn't want a ladder on the back of the camper? Uh, I, that's not a question I ask very often, so I'm kind of curious. But what I'm getting at is, how would you like your ladder done? Um, I don't, hold on, uh, over here. Sorry, I'm gonna spin you around like a record baby. I'm gonna do it slow so it's not make you motion sick unless you're a sympathetic vomiter and then just the sound right there probably triggered you. But would you like just a traditional ladder built right on the back wall? Or what about the way uh, like Ember or East West Della Terra have recently done things where they have a um, one of those telescopic ladder mounts on the back of this RV? I think that that's a really good workaround because I'm pretty sure they're not just gonna start offering ladders on these. That would be a nice pipe dream and if they did, hell Hallelujah. Uh, you know, uh, our prayers have been answered. But I th I think that that one little mount, because it only needs, I'm in reverse view, one little mount right about there on the RV. And then you could have a portable ladder. So if you wanted a ladder, hook it up and it could slide under that sofa when you're not using it. I think that that would work really cool. Would you be open to that idea though? Or would you rather have the permanent fixed ladder like you saw in that survey? Or, or would you rather have nothing back here? Now remember, we're looking at the Salem 19 DBXL today, which is the exact same thing as the Wildwood 19 DBXL. Salem and Wildwood are identical products. They go down the same production line made with the same things by the same people. The only difference on them is that Salem has a silver and blue accented exterior, whereas Wildwood is like a white with like orangey bronze accented exterior. They're the exact same thing, same cost, same everything. So check the link in the video description because that one link will always show you where we have one of these parked and what we're asking on a given day, depending on how that one's built and where it's been shipped to. For any other questions, leave me a comment and I'll do my best. And short of that, really appreciate you folks always tuning in. If you appreciate the way that I share the good and the bad and everything in between, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you next time. Thankfully, I got a little break in the rain today. That was, that was welcome. So take care, stay safe, have fun and happy camping, everyone.